Hello, 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 our most valued student. My name is Confident and this is the last lesson on work, power and efficiency. I know most of you are, are having fatigue now to say, say too much information, too much examples, but I hope guys this is of benefit to you. Remember to subscribe if you are watching from YouTube uh, and then it help us to know how many of you are benefiting out there. And also guys, remember to ensure that the notification bell is turned on. Now let's look at the last question on these work, power, and what? And efficiency. Most students who have been requesting these lessons, they say, please say, can you give us the lessons on work, power, and efficiency? Now, first part 4.1 definition, what is energy? It is what? It is what? What do you think energy is? Huh? What is energy? What is energy? What is energy? I gave you that. It is the ab ability, not ability is. It is the ability to do work. Energy is the ability to do work. And that's the definition of energy. 4.2. A crane hoists a load. A crane is hoisting or it hoists a load of 5,000 newtons to the top of a building. And that building is 30 meters high. Very important. The chain used to hoist the load has a weight of 20 newtons per meter now the first part says calculate the total work done in hoisting the load and the chain they didn't want you to draw but it's very important for you to sketch this so look at this you can actually sketch this because already they've given you most of the information so what you're given you're given this part to say here uh just to give it a bit of space so they are saying uh, a crane is hoisting a load of 5,000 Newton to the top of a building. So there is a load here, which is having here part is what? It's 5,000. That's the load. 5,000. Now this is F in Newtons. This is S in meters. And they told us what is the distance the distance is 30 meters so you come here again like that to say this thing is going to move a distance from here which is what which is 30. you see that then you draw your horizontal line which connects with that 30. so it's like you have this and you have that it must just end there it must not go further than that all right so that is it and then the next part they are saying what uh the chain used to hoist the load has a weight of look 20 newtons per meter so that's the important part here to say let me write it here to say chain they're saying it's 20 meters is equal to i mean 20 newtons not meters 20 newtons is equal to one meter but we want 30 meters how many uh, newtons you multiply this is 20 you kind of cross multiply this it's 20 times 30 and then it will give you what so for 30 meters this is the total weight actually of this chain so it's 20 times 30 we've done this it's 600 so this chain is 600 newtons this is for the 30 meter length so it's 600 newtons but now remember, if you take the 600 newtons, you say total weight, it will be what? The weight of the chain is chain plus what? Plus the load. Don't forget that. So you take the chain, which is 600, you add that 5,000. So what do you get? You get 5,600 newtons. That's what you're going to have there. It will be your 5,000 600 then when you're drawing you're just going to connect it like that that's what is actually happening that's the diagram now calculate the total work done it is the area under and you are looking at the area of this one here oh remind me uh remind me to show you the second method i don't know how you're gonna remind me but do your best try to remind me wherever you are okay look at this now here we say length that is the area here is length times breadth 
and then we do the other one here this area you see that's a triangle I know it's a bit high but I just wanted to show you the two shapes here and the area here is half times base times height so we can now find the total area to say a work remember we call it work in this case it will be what it will be work done is equal to length times breadth plus half times base times height which is equal to you can put it in brackets like that to say it's two length is 30 times the breadth so you can see it's 5,000 five you seeing that you can put it in brackets even if we don't but still gonna be fine plus half times the breadth you can use still 30 there for the triangle times the height the height is the five you're finding that difference 5000 to 5600 it's 600 there so the height there is 600 are you seeing that which is the weight of the lord remember that so when i use the calculator to do that it will be um 30 times 5000 plus and then I've got what? 1 over 2 times 30 and then times 600. What do I get? It's 159,000. So this is 159,000 joules. Okay? Which is what? Divide by 1,000. 159 kilojoules i said remind me of the second method thank you for reminding me let me show you the second method if i'm doing it right it's like this i can find uh remember work just i'm gonna use something like this to say this is the second method it says remember a uh, work is what you can use it in all the other ones where to be doing work is f you can use f average times distance now what is f average now f average says you find the average force you start from here up to there which is what f average is equal to 5600 plus 5000 then you divide it by what by 2 let's do that let's find the what the f average is 5600 plus 5000 and I divide that by 2 it gives me what? 5300 so that's my F average and then I'm going to say now work is equal to F average which is 5300 times the distance remember is 30 doesn't change then when you do that you then find uh, see what answer it's, it's gonna give us so it's 5300 times 30 it's 159,000 one five nine thousand are uh, Jews so that is another way you could have done that same answer second one second one second one don't get tired the second one is the trapezium one now the trapezium is like this i'm looking at this distance here for the trapezium you measure this distance here and that distance here is five thousand and you measure the distance here i'm looking at the trapezium uh, that distance is what 5600 and you measure the height from here here I'll do that like that intentional and that distance is 30 so when you're using the trapezium rule you're going to say 
the formula its area of work done is equal to half a plus b times height which is equal to half now it's up to you what you do but this can be your a this can be your b and this is our height so it doesn't matter this can be b or a this can be a or b doesn't matter so it's 5000 plus 5600 times 30 so it's 5000 plus 5600 times 30 if you can actually notice you will see that this formula here this one here is actually captured here see that you see that's 5000 plus 5 5600 plus 5000 over 2 it is that so you can use your calculator then it must actually give you the answer to say 1 over 2 and then what we have 5000 plus 5600 times 30 and then you get 159,000 100 or 159 kilojoules or 100 or 159 thousand joules okay guys i've just been trying to find different ways of doing this anyways fine calculate the total power question question four point what four point two point two calculate the total power required in hoisting the load and the chain if it takes five minutes to hoist the total load now they want the power and then there's five minutes look at this so power is work done over time taken now work is one five nine zero 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 that's the work done time taken is five minutes but change convert time time is five minutes times 60 seconds so it's five times 60 to convert it to seconds don't forget that that's the only dif difficult thing or the only thing that was challenging in this question otherwise this one was a standard question five times 60 it was not complicated there there is 530, 530 what? watts, that's what you needed there. So it was just a basic question, take it from there. Or if you wanted, you would have said power, but it was not necessary. You could have said power is what? Power is force times distance over time. Then you take it from the beginning there to say what? was um the force in this case uh, okay let's leave this one let me not complicate things let me not complicate things that is fine that's the basic one it's three marks but it was fine then it says an object a 40 kilogram object is placed on an inclined plane forming an angle of 20 degrees with the horizontal so we can actually sketch this to say you have an object like this and then this angle is 20 degrees and then there is our object and this particular object is what is 40 kg let me write it actually here to say this is 40 kg is placed forming an angle with the calculate the force required to pull the object up the incline so they want to pull this thing up here and this object needs to go up it's a very incomplete question though so f um effective or f applied i'll call it f applied because now we need to find the friction but it's two marks there it's an incomplete in a way they didn't tell us whether there was a friction and the coefficient of friction and all that you can still find it but for two marks i think you needed to remind yourself to say resolution of forces you have got what here you have got the normal and opposite the normal what do you have as well as going downwards remember going down what is it you need to just to know this to say number one this is our normal this is our w cos our cos theta and this is our w sine theta 
very important to know that. So you can see that the forces that are connecting to each other is these ones, whereby you're going to say FA is equal to W sine theta, which is equal to the weight. Now the weight is, is mg, remember mass times gravity sine theta, you know the mass, which is 40, the gravity is 9,8, sine our angle theta is 20 degrees that's why i'm saying for this mark allocation i think this was sufficient enough it's two marks you didn't need you didn't need to go further it's 40 times 9,8 times sine 20 and then what do we get we get 134,07 so it's 134 0.07 newtons so the force needed that is to suppose we ignore friction so the the force required to pull the object up the inclined plane if we ignore friction that's why here to, they were supposed to put a condition or give us some extra information to find friction so that is that guys it becomes 10 marks so guys i've come to the end of this session on work power and efficiency i hope it was of benefit to you go through the videos i think it's five or six videos and by the end of this you will be in a better position i suppose we've come to the end of our lesson remember to leave some comments remember to leave some suggestions actually i brought this topic because someone suggested it. i didn't know that it was not there on our channel so i brought it because of someone suggested so your suggestions mean a lot they can actually result in you getting the actual topic that you've been struggling uh being covered in this channel we've come to the end of our lesson remember your comments your subscription and your sharing is the most important thing in this channel thank you